So I don't have much surgery content on the channel, so I thought I should actually beef up some of the surgery content and we discuss a little bit of these surgical topics. Let's talk about testicular torsion and epididymitis. Grab a piece of paper and let's go. Hello and welcome to MK's Medical Review Series. My name is Dr. Moses Kazevu. This is his on my YouTube channel where we look at medical topics in depth. Today we're going to be looking at two important topics. We're going to be looking at testicular torsion and epididymitis. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification icon so you never miss on such amazing content every time I post. Grab a piece of paper and let's go. So here's our warm-up question, which is an essay. I know it's been a long time since I've done these warm-up questions. A 15-year-old boy presents to the casualty department with scrotal pain. He gives history of sudden onset with no history of trauma. Answer the questions below. What are the two main differentials? What four things would you ask for in the history to differentiate the two? What is the most likely diagnosis? What is a print test? Describe how it is done. What radiological investigation is indicated? You may pause the video, write down your answers, scream the net at the screen, I will give you the answers at the end of the lecture. So remember, we'll begin with testicular torsion. This is just simply twisting of the spermatic cord, which is causing this testicular ischemia because most of the blood supply is going to be coming through this spermatic cord. The peak incidence is during the first year of life and also during the age of puberty, roughly at around the age of 13. Remember, this is when the growth rates are actually the fastest. There is a higher risk with undescended testes. It actually carries a higher risk of the ipsilateral torsion and the salvage rate is going to be between 80 to 100 percent if surgical intervention is done within six hours of the onset of the pain. Testicular torsion is frequently preceded by the strenuous activity or an athlete so it should be a person who's participating in these contact sports. Remember that it can be intermittent in which the pain actually passes away however surgery is still advisable especially if the testicles are in a transverse lie. What's the pathophysiology? Remember here the, testi the testicles are actually twisting on their own spermatic cord. So this is going to be causing obstruction of the venous return and this is going to be lead to leading to swelling. And this obstruction of the venous return can sometimes even progress. If it persists, it progresses to thrombi forming. So this may be having a venous thrombosis and eventually this may lead to an arterial occlusion. And once the arterial occlusion has happened, this is going to lead to death of the tissue which is known as infarction and this is because of the blood supply that is insufficient. We may sometimes see a bell clapper deformity where there is insufficient attachment of the testicle to the tunica vaginalis allowing for a pathologically large degree of rotational freedom and this actually increases the risk of torsion. Then what are the clinical features? The, the patient is going to get this acute onset of severe pain in the testicle, making it very uncomfortable for them to walk. They'll have this low abdominal pain or the inguinal canal pain because of the origin of the testes and the innervation. Then you have the scrotal, the, the scrotum is actually elevated, it's swollen and it's tender. They may sometimes have this nausea and vomiting. And the classic side is you're going to have this high riding testes with a horizontal lie. However, this is, not, this is quite difficult to actually elicit because of the degree of swelling that you have in the scrotum and the pain. Sometimes they may have a reactive hydrocele and they will lose this cremasteric reflex. Remember the cremasteric reflex is elicited if you stroke the medial aspect of the patient's thigh, you will see that there's going to be contraction of the cremasteric muscle and this causes ipsilateral elevation of the testes as well as the scrotum. You may produce, you may sometimes do a print sign or a print test where the pain actually decreases with elevation of the testes. So if you elevate the testes, it actually decreases the pain and this is positive for testicular torsion. This action actually relieves the pain in epididymitis, but actually exacerbates it in testicular torsion. Rather, sorry, it's actually in epididymitis. It worsens the, it relieves the pain in epididymitis and exacerbates the pain in testicular torsion. I may have confused the two in my prior statement. Then the diagnosis, remember that since epididymitis is the most common confusing 
condition with testicular torsion, several tests must be done to actually distinguish the two. You may do a urinalysis and an FBC, which is usually unremarkable in testicular torsion, and most patients are usually afebrile. And since the ability to salvage the affected testis is actually dependent on how quick the testis can actually become dis di distorted, or rather uh, putting it back in the uh, anatomical position or the anatomical Place, remember time is testes. And if the diagnosis is thought to be torsion, then surgical exploration is indicated. You may do a color Doppler ultrasound and nuclear scintigraphy that have become the test of choice that may show the presence or the absence of blood flow to the suspected testes. Remember, you should always suspect testicular torsion in a patient that has inguinal or abdominal pain and an empty scrotum. Management includes surgical repair, which is the definitive treatment. If the testis is viable, then a bilateral Ochiopexy or ochidopexy, where there is detorsion of the testes and fixation with a suture can be performed. If the testes is actually necrotic, then the testicle is actually removed to prevent gangrene, and the contralateral testes is actually anchored back through an ochiopexy as a prophylactic type of measure. Remember that there is a higher, uh, the higher the undescended testes, the higher the lifelong risk of cancer irrespective of whether the testis is brought down into the scrotum or it's left wherever it is. But most likely it would be brought down to the scrotum, but still it would be at a higher risk of developing testicular cancer. Then with orchitis, remember this is inflammation of the testis. It's commonly associated with inflammation of the epididymis. So we often refer to the condition as epididymal orchitis. Orchitis is due to infection that can be spread to the testis through the blood, the lymphatics or the epididymis. And causes include viral infections, mumps is very common, filarial disease, leprosy, bacterial, uh, brucellosis, infectious mononucleosis, and it can actually be precipitated by a retrograde spread due to uh, stricture in the urethra or after prostate or bladder surgery or even after instrumentation. Syphilis involves the testes can actually cause these gomatous ulcers on front of the scrotum. Certain features are going to be things like pain in the testis, which often radiates to the groin and is associated with funiculitis. You may have fever and tenderness in the testis. The may be a secondary hydrocell and urinary infection is often noticed. The differential diagnosis is going to be torsion of the testis as well as testicular tumor. Remember when you do the Prince test and you elevate the testis, it will relieve the pain in epididymitis and it will worsen the pain in testicular torsion. Treatment is going to be through antibiotics, analgesia, as well as treating the underlying cause. With epididymitis, inflammation of the epididymis is commonly associated with orchitis, orchitis epididymal orchitis, and this is going to be caused by non-specific things like viral infections like mumps, bacterial, filarial, TB, which may involve mainly the epididymis, not the testis. So you get this ulcer or sinus that's going to be forming over the posterior aspect of the scrotum and not in front. Then you may have a gonococcal infection and even schistosomiasis. And remember, epididymitis can be acute or chronic. Clinical features include pain, tenderness in the epididymis, swollen and tender epididymis. It may be thickened, and often there is a secondary hydrocele, and it may you may have a beaded vas deferens with uh, uh, craggy epididymis in TB. Management is going to be including analgesia, antibiotics, diethyl carbamazine citrate, which is 100 milligrams for three weeks. We can also give this in patients that have orchitis. Specific causes should be ruled out. And of course, long-term epididymitis causes real psychological disturbance to the patient. So we should reassure the patient whenever possible. Coming back to our warm-up question, a 15-year-old boy presents to casualty department with scrotal pain. He gives a history of sudden onset or with no history of trauma, answer the questions below. What are the two main differentials? So it could be testicular torsion or epididymal orchitis. What four things would you ask for in the history to differentiate the two? A history of nausea and vomiting, previous episode, precipitating factors such as sex, masturbation, pornographic material, and history of urethritis. What is the most likely diagnosis? So this is most likely testicular torsion. And the Prince test is done by elevation of the testis. So if it's testicular torsion, it tends to increase the pain. While as with epididymitis, it would tend to relieve the pain. And our radiological investigation, which is indicated, is our Doppler ultrasound. I really hope you learned a lot about testicular torsion, orchitis, as well as epididymal orchitis. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel. Hit the bell notification icon so you never miss such amazing content every time I post. To Zambia and beyond, my name is Dr. Moses Kazevu. Until next time, bye-bye.